I want to share with you guys Genesis chapter 2, verse 10, starting in verse 10. Listen to this. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of of the first is Pishon. Verse 13, the name of the second river is Gihon. Verse 14, and the name of the third river is Tigris. You might say Tigris, but in Hebrew it's actually Kidekwel. Kidekwel. But we'll call it Tigris. And the name of the fourth river is the Euphrates. And, and listen, all the names of these rivers have meaning. The first river, which is Pishon, means great and freely flowing. Great and freely flowing. The name of the second river, Gihon, means a bursting forth. The name of the third river, Tigris, it means rapid, sharp arrow, and enforced government. So something rapid, sharp arrow, enforced government. And the name of the fourth river, Euphrates means fruitfulness. Let me just share something with you. In the book of John, maybe I'll share a couple things and then I got to get going. I have to drive, man. I could sit here for a long time and meditate on these verses with you guys. And, um, go really deep but that's just uh okay so john let's just go over this john chapter seven what verse i wrote it down john seven what is it is it 38 i can't even read my own writing yeah, verse 38. Jesus says, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Rivers, plural, out of your belly will flow rivers rivers of living water those who believe in Jesus and here in the garden we have rivers of water that flows let me share with you something else at the end of the book of John here towards the end Let's see, Jesus gets flogged. Pilate introduces Jesus after Jesus is flogged, meaning he was whooped with cat and nine tails really bad. In chapter 19 of John, Pilate introduces Jesus. He says, behold, behold means to look and see what has been unveiled. And what does Pilate want you to see that is unveiled? He says, the man. In Hebrew, the man would be Adam, Adam. Behold the man. We know Jesus isn't the first Adam, right? And then comes the crucifixion when they hang him on a cross, mock him, ridicule him, 
They beat him. They scoff at him. And in John 19, verse 34, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. And at once there came out blood and water came out of Jesus' side, right? 1 John 5, 6. Says that when Jesus came, this is he who came by water and blood, so he goes out by water and blood. This is the one who came by water and blood, 1 John 5, 6. Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is truth. So Jesus came. Now imagine when Mary birthed Jesus, her water broke. And during childbirth, there is water and blood involved. And it says, Jesus came by water and blood. But then, before he ascends back to heaven, he leaves by water and blood when the soldier pierced his side with a spear. And at once, there came out blood and water. Now, if you go back to Genesis, and we check out chapter 2, It says in verse 21 that Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that Yahweh Elohim had taken from the man, he made into an Isha, which is woman, and brought her to the man, or brought her to Adam. Then the man said, This is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called Isha, woman, because she was taken out of Ish, man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And if we go to Galatians chapter 5, I know this is a lot, but just I want to tie these, this all in, you guys. Galatians chapter 5. What verse do I have? 31 and 32. There is no Galatians 5, 31 and 32. See, what did I do? I made a mistake. Oh, it's Ephesians. Sorry. Okay, man, I'm going to fix that. Let me put a note in my Bible. Ephesians. I probably was studying this a long time ago at night time. And... You know, you because I study the Bible before bed when I'm sleepy a lot. Okay, so excuse me, Ephesians chapter 5, 31, 32. Okay, so listen to this back into Genesis. She's taken out of, Eve is taken, the woman is taken out of Adam, the man's side. One of his ribs she was taken out of. Right? Oh, by the way, rib in Hebrew is selah. Selah. It means side, rib, side chamber, or cells, side of the Ark of the Covenant. Interesting, right? Rib. It's even the side of the Ark of the Covenant. And I think that Jesus is our, 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 our Ark of the Covenant. So anyway, it says, therefore, a man shall leave his father. This is in Genesis, by the way, chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become 
one flesh. And guess what? Paul quotes this verse. In verse 31 of Ephesians chapter 5, Therefore man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. But in 32 he says, This mystery is profound. And I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. One of the things I want you to remember is the names of these rivers that flow. Imagine when Jesus is pierced, Pishon, great and freely flowing. Water and blood, great and freely flowed out of Jesus. That's the name of the first river. The second river is called Gihon, a bursting forth. And when that man stabbed Jesus with a spear, water and blood burst forth. The next river is the Tigris, Tigris, which means rapid, sharp arrow and enforced government. And this guy takes a spear, rapidly shoves that sharp arrow into the side of Jesus. And who did it? Romans, which were the enforced government over the Jews at that time. And then when you go to the Euphrates River, the fourth one, it means fruitfulness and fruitfulness means life. So when Jesus was bleeding blood and water that came out of his side, he comes into the world full of life. He leaves the world. Is he full of death or life? He's full of life. He gives us his life. His water and his blood pours out of him, out of his side, the same place where Adam had a rib removed and God fashioned a woman for him because God said, it is not good for man to be alone. It's not good for Adam to be alone. I will make him a helper that is suitable for him, meaning they can become one. And then scripture says they did become one. Now, if Paul was saying, that this is a mystery. Why a man should leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. But we're talking about Christ in the church, he says. The scripture is talking about Christ and the church. You know you're one spirit with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, when you're joined to him, you're one spirit. And then he moves into your body, your house that contains your spirit, right? He moved in. So even your body belongs to not just you, it's you and the Lord, right? He's joined to your spirit, but lives inside of your body. Your spirit lives inside of your body as well. So your body is the temple of the Lord, is the temple of the spirit that lives inside of you. And that spirit is your true nature, which means it is your true identity. I want you to know that when I read that, when I read that in Genesis, I realize that Eve, the wife of Adam, she represents the bride of Christ. Because that's what Paul was saying. He was saying that Jesus, Son of God, he left his home in heaven and came and found a wife. And that wife is in you. And you know what we did? Just like Eve gave from her to her husband that was with her. He was not apart from her. He was with her. 
And you know what? Even when you are about to go and not only get tempted to do something, but then you fulfill that temptation like Eve did. Adam didn't leave her. He was still there. Jesus doesn't leave you. He was still there. He's still there. Did you walk into a strip club? Guess what? He was still with you. I know that's hard to process. I know that's hard to process. Stay with me. Once upon a time, I was talking to a fellow believer, supposed to be a fellow believer, when I was out in Connecticut, a place I moved to for two years of my life, the only time I ever left San Diego, California, in my life to live somewhere else. I went and moved to Connecticut for two years in the year 2012 and 2013. In 2014, I moved back to San Diego, California. But I was inside of a gym one day and I was talking to this guy who competes in bodybuilding and he said he was a Christian and we became kind of like casual friends, I guess, you know, talking in the gym, how you doing, bro, blah, blah, blah. And I told him how uh, I'm learning to leave Mr. Ego outside of the gym. I said, but Jesus, he always comes with me in the gym. And this guy said, what? I said, Jesus, he comes with me into the gym. And he says, no, he doesn't. Jesus isn't into this stuff. This is physical stuff. He would never do that. I'm like, so wait, your Jesus stays outside of the gym when you come in and work out? And he's like, yeah. See, that's his Jesus, I suppose, but that's not my Jesus. And I don't go into strip clubs. I did. I did in the past. But if I were to so choose to do that today, which I'm not saying I'm thinking about it or even going to, I'm just using it as an illustration. Wherever I go, the Spirit of Christ is still housed inside of me because His Spirit is sealed in me. So I'm not saying He approves. I'm not saying he's saying, hey, man, let's go watch this stuff together. He's probably saying, you know what, Michael, you forgot who you are. Did you forget your identity again today, son of God? Probably, Lord. Most likely, yes. I forgot who I am. Why? I just, I don't know things, I let things get to me, I guess. I didn't trust in your strength. I was doubting who you are in me and who I am in you. I was trying to fulfill the lust of the flesh with my flesh. My spirit can't fulfill the lust of the flesh. John speaks about that. No one born of the seed of Christ can do that. But the one who's born with the seed of Christ in him is your spirit. You have the seed of Christ in you, but that's your spirit. Who you are in the spirit cannot sin. Your spirit not only will not sin, your spirit is incapable of sin because you're joined to the spirit of Christ. So back to Adam and Eve. Eve, her husband is with her. Did you read it? In Genesis, he's with her when she goes to the forbidden death tree, the tree of da'ath in Hebrew, D-A-A-T-H, so close to our English word death that it's not even funny. I suppose we got our English word death through the Hebrew word da'ath, which means the tree of the knowledge. Knowledge of good and evil. How can that be death? Because partaking of that started the process of dying. Do you understand? Because in Hebrew, God said, dying, you shall die. Meaning, the day you partake of that fruit, you're not going to drop dead physically, but death, the process of dying, has now occurred. So now they put on mortality and stripped off their immortality. You and I, we are waiting to put on immortality. 
That immortality, by the way, in Greek is called oikaterion. It's our spiritually glorified body where our spirit, our soul, and our bodies of flesh become perfect in union. Oikaterion. Now, Eve, since she represents the church, the bride of Christ, right? Stay with me. I mean, take Israel, for instance. Jesus came to Israel and they rejected him. But not all of them did. And we know that Jew and the Gentile are put into the same tree, the same root of the tree, joined together as one. So there's no more separating Jew from Gentile. So let's include in this bride also what do you call those messianic Jews, the ones that believe that Yeshua is Moshiach, Messiah, Savior, the Christ. You see, what happens is Jesus, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, it says that he who knew no sin was made sin so that you and I could be made the righteousness of God in him. So what he did, if you see him in Adam and you see us in Eve, is we gave Adam the forbidden fruit, the fruit of death. And Adam became sin by partaking of that fruit, became sin for his wife. And death entered into the world because Adam partook. Sin enters in through that one man and death through sin. Because that one man, Adam, had sinned. And Jesus, who knew no sin, Adam knew no sin until his bride gave him the fruit of death. Our sin was put into Jesus Christ. You, the bride of Christ, your sin went into Jesus. And it says he was made into sin. And in exchange, this husband of ours, he bled, he suffered greatly, and he died physically on the cross. They pierced his side, just like Adam. His side was opened up, do you remember? And God closed that flesh back up after removing the rib so he could fashion a woman out of that rib. And Jesus on the cross was pierced and he came in this world through blood and water and he leaves through blood and water, but that blood and that water came out for us so that we could have rivers of his living waters flowing through us, resulting in fruitfulness, just like the meaning of the Euphrates. Fruitfulness, which is life. He gave us life and his blood was poured out for us, cleansing us past, present, and future of all of our sin and condemnation. 
and he restored us to life. Eve, she had to die. And yeah, you and I, we die too, but we die to our old self, that old identity. And we're raised in the new. Because Jesus restored life to us. And he gave us himself. And we're joined together with him in complete unity in our spirits. And we are one with him. And now you guys... We're trying to get our heads, our minds to figure this stuff out so that our soul can prosper in this world. And God wants your soul to prosper. He said it through John. Beloved. Why are you beloved? Because you are greatly loved. You are the wife of of Jesus the Christ you're so greatly loved and you don't even know it sometimes you're not aware of it sometimes that's why you drift that's why you rebel that's why you reject because of all these voices out there and you're not truly loved and if you were truly loved you would be loved because you gotta first love God so that he'll love you back and you're not showing God love because you don't obey him and do what he wants. And all that talk gets you straying in who you truly are and you forget who you are in Christ. But he loves you. And John says, beloved, I pray above all things that you will be in health. Mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, health, which is life, not death, not sickness, life in every way. Health, good health, good life, that you will be in that and prosper. Prosper means to do well, to do well, even as your soul prospers you and I are a hundred percent prosperous in spirit but we need to change the way we think and train that mind and renew every single thought we have toward God and toward ourselves and toward mankind that's why scripture says all throughout the New Testament to metanoia Change the way you think. Change your mind. So you can think like the beautiful bride you truly are. The bride of Christ. So your mind can think in your true identity. Scripture says, you have the mind of Christ. So if you have it, let's all start tapping into it, shall we? All right, that's it. I got to get to my destination. So I love you guys. I hope this message has blessed you. Have a great day. And we'll talk again real soon.